God was not bored. He wasn't lonely. I mean, God is he, hes holy. He's happy. He's all in all. He's everything. And it, it's hard to even grasp the concept of God sometimes, isn't it? Because he lives outside of time. I mean, we, everything we know is in time. And everything we do is in time. And we judge everything that we do by stuff that's in time. Whereas God looks down upon his creation, which is in time. And I just I kind of find that interesting. But God wanted to create a human race. And we became a fallen human race. The, in Romans 10, it tells us the whole creation groans and travails. Now, that means not only the planet, all the things in the planet, but humankind is fallen, okay? And so God, seeing that he had a fallen creation, he had to, in Genesis chapter 3, set a way for mankind to be reconciled back to God. And that is what one of the divine goals of salvation is. But we're going to take this one step at a time. So God, with in the context of the divine goals of salvation, he wanted to create a new human race. Because the original human race, Adam and Eve, fell into sin. One sin. They ate of the fruit of the tree. Okay? Everybody says it's an apple, but I don't think the Bible actually says it's an apple. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. It was something from the tree that God said not to eat, and they ate it. So what we're talking about here is God... Through the divine goal of salvation, he wanted to have a renewal of humans who were formerly of Adam's race and ruined by sin. This is going to evolve a recreation of the gospel, believer, gospel believer's personhood and his human nature. Okay, It's not the replacement of his or hers essential part. It's going to be by the renewing of their mind, by the regeneration of their inner man. Now, let's turn in our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, if you wouldn't mind. <clears throat> We're going to turn a, a few scriptures. Is everybody okay turning a little bit tonight? Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Because, I, I kid you not, in some churches you turn too much, and some people, you know, they're not happy with you. So, okay. Like I said, I wasn't sure how to pre if I was preaching, teaching. I didn't know if I was up there. I didn't know what was going to happen. So we're just going to be all love Jesus, and we're all going <laughs> to study his word a little bit here tonight. Okay. <clears throat> it's going to evolve a recreation of the gospel believer's personal. Ephesians chapter 4, and let's look at um, uh, verse 22. And it says here that he put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, but to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye might put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. This is one of the, the divine goals of salvation. God wants us to be holy, for he is holy, it tells us in Peter. That is what God wants us to do. So he's saying he wants to create us in righteousness and in true holiness. Now let's look over here in Ephesians chapter 2 while we're in Ephesians. <clears throat> what is one of the other things that God was trying to do? Look at verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship. Everything about our salvation is of God. If we have any part in our salvation then it's of works. Would everybody agree? And if it's of works, then it's not by faith, and then our faith is it, it, it's meaningless. So it says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? Unto good works. So one of the other things that God wanted us to do is to be saved, and once we're saved, we're now going to... Um, do good works after we're saved. We're doing good works because we are saved, because we love God. Now, look at 2 Corinthians 5. <clears throat> In 
chapter 17, not 17, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now remember, we're talking about a recreation. God is redoing mankind because he's building the body of Christ. He's putting off the old man and putting on the new man. So verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And all things are passed away. All things become new. Well, that's a really precious verse. All things become new. You know, if I don't know I, if any of you have experienced this, but a lot of the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Now, I still watch the Bears. I'm sorry, I do. Okay, and there's a few other things I still do, but because I, I, I have to have a couple of things, you know. But the things that I used to, the TV, I watch football, I watch <clears throat> 24, which is a very good show. <laughs> I like 24. And I watch the news. That's it. I don't like watching TV because I want to do things, with, other things with my time, like study God's Word. I'm trying to get my master's degree in um, biblical prophecy. That's what I am doing. I am getting a, a master's degree in prophecy. Now, just because you want to study prophecy, oh, well, that doesn't mean you're a dispensary. That, that has nothing to do with it. Learning prophecy helps you to understand why you need to be a dispensationalist. And I, I really mean what I'm saying there, and I know whereof I speak. So, today, God is creating a new human race in Christ Jesus. We just read 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Look at Galatians 3. I put my other glasses on. I'm having trouble seeing some of these notes. You know, it's funny. I need two new pair of glasses. These help me to, when I'm standing back further, I can look a little closer. But Galatians 3, and let's look at verse 17, uh, uh, verse 27. Galatians 3, 27. Uh, 26, for you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen to that. But for as many of you has been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So here we're talking about again, God is creating a new person. He's creating a new uh, uh, entity called the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, brothers and sisters, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. There used to be a middle wall of partition, and the Jews were the people of God at one point. But if you read Romans 9 through 11, we talk about the casting away of Israel. Why was Israel cast away? so that until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. God always promised in the Old Testament that Gentiles can be saved. But in the Old Testament, who can tell me, how did a Gentile get saved? What did he have to do? You, you proselyte to Judaism, right? Absolutely. So, but now, there's no more of that. Now, we're all on equal playing ground. There is no special peculiar people of God right now. It's the body of Christ, where Christ is the head of the body. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that uh, uh, God made a way for the Gentiles, because I'm a Gentile, and I thank God for that. So God, the Holy Spirit does the, the, his ministries of regeneration by uh, baptism into Christ. Remember 1 Corinthians 12, 13. We are baptized into Christ by the Holy Spirit, okay? And Titus 3, 5, we become a Christian and we get a new nature by the washing of regeneration. You know, Titus 3, 5, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. We are told that since God is creating this new entity called the body of Christ, we are going to have the, be of the image of God. We're going to have a body just like Jesus is. Isn't that what we're told in the Bible? Turn to Philippians <clears throat> chapter 3. Look what it says there. Now we're talking about the divine goals of salvation. Why did God save us? God is saving us so that we can go back into fellowship with him and that we can live a life with everything he wants us to uh, live a life that is going to be holy and pleasing unto him. <clears throat> 